This module will demonstrate how to configure an analog DOTI interface card. If you're unfamiliar with the basics of analog telephony, you should review the previous module, which covers related concepts. If you're unfamiliar with DOTI, you should review the first module in this chapter, which describes how Asterisk and DOTI coordinate to connect traditional telephony interfaces to an Asterisk system. We'll first introduce some of the physical interface cards that can connect to analog phones and lines. After that, we'll show how to configure a card at both the DOTI and Asterisk levels. Finally, we'll briefly cover some of the Asterisk CLI commands related to DOTI. The examples here assume that you have a DOTI analog card already installed in your system, that the DOTI driver package is also installed, and that make config was run during the DOTI install so that the appropriate Linux kernel drivers are already loaded. Digium offers analog interface cards in port densities of 4 to 24 ports. The base cards offered support 4, 8, and 24 ports. Each card accepts both FXO and FXS daughter modules, which may be arranged in the specific configuration required for your system. These daughter modules come in one and four port variations. The four port card supports only the single port modules, and the 24 port card supports only the four port modules. The eight port card supports both module sizes. All of the base cards also support a separate hardware echo cancellation module that can greatly improve audio quality in some circumstances. Each card also has a Molex power connection that must be connected to either the server's power supply or to an external power supply if any FXS modules are to be used. FXS modules must be able to provide enough voltage to ring analog stations, and the power the cards pull through the PCI interface is not sufficient for this task. Shown here is a 4-port Digium TDM 410P card with one FXO module installed at port 1 and one FXS module installed at port 3. Also pictured is the hardware echo cancellation module. The port numbers on the card are labeled on both the face of the card and on the external bracket where the RJ11 jacks are. With one FXO and one FXS installed, asterisk can be connected to one analog phone and one analog line. Of course, that doesn't mean that the system is only capable of a single call. With this card installed, the ports become additional resources available to Asterisk, along with any other resources already installed. So the analog phone might be connected to an external caller over a SIP trunk, while the incoming call on the analog line could be connected to an IVR. The phone and the phone line are treated as separate resources on the PBX. In the remaining slides in this module, we'll demonstrate how this card can be set up for use with Asterisk. But before we begin configuration, we have a few quick warnings. Remember that if your card has any FXS modules, a power cable must be connected to the Molex connector on the card. If this isn't done, the FXS won't work properly because it won't have enough voltage to ring the attached phone. Also be very careful not to connect a phone line to a powered FXS port. Because both ends provide power, there is significant risk of causing electrical damage to your DOTI card. Plug the telephone into the FXS port, and only plug the line providing dial tone to your system into the FXO port. We'll now guide you through the basic configuration of an analog DOTI device, using Digium's TDM410P as an example card. We'll be as specific as possible, but the actual interface card you use may have a slightly different configuration than we present. Please read and follow the instruction manual provided with your hardware. We'll first confirm that the card is detected by the operating system by running a command on the Linux console called LSPCI, which lists the PCI devices recognized by the system. We look for an entry that mentions Digium or the card model. We don't usually worry about the particular values presented for the card. We're just looking to make sure the card is present. We can also use the D message or DMESG Linux utility to verify that the system properly detected the card. Before we configure the DOTI channel driver in Asterisk, we must first configure the DOTI hardware device drivers. We do this by editing the configuration file system.conf in the Etsy DOTI directory. As is the case with the sample configuration files contained in the Etsy Asterisk directory, this file contains lots of information covering configuration options and examples. These are present in comments denoted by the hash sign. If we strip out these comments for the moment, we can see that there are two options set by default. 
These are tone zones that describe the frequencies and durations of the tones to signal dial tone, busy, and other call indications. Each option can be set to a two-letter country code. A single default zone is required, but multiple load zone settings are permitted. Valid country codes can be found in the zonedata.c file in the tool subdirectory of the DOTI source. To configure the device drivers for our TDM 410P card, the only requirement is to set a signaling method for each port. Optionally, we may also enable software echo cancellation for these channels. The valid signaling options for analog channels are comprised of the port signaling method, which is FXS or FXO, combined with ground start, loop start, or cool start. Remember to select FXS signaling for FXO ports and FXO signaling for FXS ports. Our example card has an FXO at port 1 and an FXS at port 3. We will use cool start signaling to ensure disconnect supervision capability. So our total DOTI configuration will specify load zone and default zone of US, FXS KS equals 1, and FXO KS equals 3. It doesn't matter where in the file these lines are listed, and they don't have to be placed together. But we recommend putting all of your configuration at the bottom of the file, so it's easy for an administrator to see at a glance all of the options that have been set. Ports do not need to be configured individually. If we had a TDM 2400P with FXO ports for the first 12 channels and FXS ports for the remaining channels, we could list them as a range. FXS KS equals 1-12 and FXO KS equals 13-24. We've now configured DOTI, but we haven't yet applied that configuration. Before we do, we need to make sure that the appropriate DOTI kernel modules are loaded. If you ran Make Config when installing DOTI, this step should be done for you automatically. We can verify that the right kernel modules are loaded by running the Linux command lsmod, which stands for List Modules. We should see at least one module labeled DOTI and one that starts with WCTDM. If these are not listed when lsmod is run, the modules are not yet loaded into the kernel. You can load them manually by issuing the mod probe Linux command followed by the name of the module for the card you're using. For most Digium analog cards, we would issue mod probe wctdm 24xxp. Consult the documentation for your card to determine which kernel module needs to be loaded. Loading the module for your specific card We'll also load the DOTI.KO kernel module and any other modules that need to be loaded. Now we can move on and apply the DOTI configuration. We've seen repeatedly that configuration changes in asterisk aren't applied until we explicitly make asterisk go and read the new configuration. The same is true of DOTI. We apply the configuration we've defined by using a tool called DOTI config. It is run by issuing the DOTI underscore CFG command on the Linux command line. We recommend running this command with three V flags for verbosity, so any warnings or errors are printed to the console. Depending on the Linux distribution you're using and how the DOTI package was installed, DOTI config may be automatically run for you when the server is started. But as long as asterisk isn't running yet, it won't hurt anything to run the DOTI configuration tool again. Now that we've configured the hardware, we can proceed to configure asterisk to make use of it. This is done in asterisks chandotti.conf. This is one of the few asterisk configuration files that doesn't have a general section. Instead, we see two unique section headings called trunk groups and channels. The trunk group section doesn't apply to analog telephony, so we won't discuss it here. The other section is called channels. This is where we'll configure the interface between dotty and asterisk. As with other asterisk configuration files, these options are set by key value pairs. You can view the sample chan.e.com file to see all of the configuration options available. There are many settings available for both internal endpoints and external trunks. There are two ways we can configure channels in chan.e.com. The first is to configure all the connections and the relevant options in one long list contained in the channels section. The parsing of chan.e.conf is different than for other asterisk configuration files. All of the settings are read and remembered one line at a time until the special setting channel is read. 
When the channel setting is read, Asterisk applies all the other settings it has read so far to that channel. So, all of the settings that were configured before the channel equals 3 line also apply to channel equals 1, except those that have been reset after channel 3 was assigned. There are a few other things to notice here. First, the syntax for the signaling setting is slightly different than it was in Dottie's system.conf. There is an underscore between the port type and the port signaling, but the configuration here must match with the configuration in system.conf for everything to work properly. Notice also that the caller ID setting for channel 1 is as received. This is a special value that just means asterisk will read the incoming caller ID on that channel instead of using the same value we set for channel 3. We've also set various other options for these channels, including the context option. This option behaves the same way as it does for SIP and EECS. The context listed is where in the dial plan asterisk will begin looking for an extension that matches what was dialed on the channel. The style on the previous slide can be rather confusing, and adding options in the wrong place can easily cause unwanted or problematic behavior. Because of this, there is an alternate configuration style that is supported. If you wish, you can configure Dottie endpoints in a style that is similar to that of our VoIP endpoints. You can think of the channels section like a general or global section, with additional discrete sections listed below that for each endpoint. Individual channels or groups of channels are specified in section headings indicated by the square brackets. Each section defines the channels that apply to it using the Dottie Chan keyword instead of the keyword channel. Any option set in the master channel section above will apply to each section that defines one or more Dottie Chans. Chan Dottie is not as flexible as some of the other asterisk modules when it comes to applying new configuration. Usually, you'll need to restart Dottie instead of just reloading it to apply configuration changes, particularly if you've changed the signaling for any channels. Restarting Dottie can be done on the Asterisk CLI using the command Dottie Restart, but be aware that this command will stop all calls using a Dottie channel, so think twice before doing this on a live system. If the changes you've made to the Dottie configuration don't impact the signaling, then you can try manually reloading the chan dotty module via the command module reload chan underscore dotty dot so. This will attempt to apply the configuration changes without destroying active calls. There are a few other dotty CLI commands worth knowing. Dotty show status displays dotty cards and their status, while dotty show channels prints a list of all the dotty channels configured for use with asterisk. If you've configured dotty's system.conf, but not asterisks chandotty.conf, you won't see the channels here. You can get detailed information about a single dotty channel by using the dotty show channel command with the last argument as the channel number. The FXS port on our card connected to a phone should already be able to make calls to asterisk. If we want asterisk to send calls to it, we just have to assign an extension in the dial plan to dial its dotty channel number. We'll put extension 6003 in the internal underscore users context and have it ring for 30 seconds. We'll also want an S extension in the context we set for the phone line connected to the FXO port. Normal analog lines don't have any way of communicating dialed extension information, so incoming calls are always directed to the S or start extension in the configured context. If we set the context in chandotty.conf for the FXO to be the same as the one defined in the example dial plan, in the IVR basics module of the interactive dial plan chapter, then this is already set up. Incoming calls to the FXO will go to the IVR. We can add a new extension to make an outbound call over the FXO. In this example, seven digit local numbers are sent out the FXO, which is DOTI port 1. This module offered a practical demonstration of how to set up an analog DOTI device. We introduced Digium's family of DOTI analog interfaces and then walk through the process of installing and configuring the 4-port TDM410P card. We saw how to configure the Dottie device drivers as well as Asterisk's Chan Dottie channel driver so that Asterisk can use the hardware. We rounded out the module with dial plan examples that make use of the ports on the card. In the next two modules, we'll discuss the concepts and theory behind traditional digital telephony and then go through a configuration example in the same style we used in this module.